Legends tell that before the fall of the Mayan civilization, they made contact with a distant alien race. I've spent the last 40 years with my traveling companion here, trying to track down any artifacts of that communication. We think we found it. Here, at a lake in central Iowa. Done my calculations and I think we should find the artifact just out here. I'll bring you along on the GoPro here. Well, I uh, forgot my goggles. So everything just looks all blurry down there. So I can't find the artifact. But more importantly, why does it look all blurry when you're underwater? Hey folks, welcome back to Bennett Science. Today we'll be talking about refraction, how we see, and how you can see clearly when you're underwater. Waves travel at different speeds. Like, you probably have noticed that you always see the lightning before you hear the thunder. Unless you're too close, then you don't notice that difference. You see the lightning first because light waves travel faster than sound waves. But did you know that light waves travel at different speeds through different materials? Actually, that's true of all waves. For example, water waves travel faster in deeper water than they do in shallower water. You might also be aware that the sound of your voice travels faster through helium than through air. Imagine that there are two materials side by side and that a single wave would travel at a different speed in this material than it would in this material. There's an imaginary line between those materials that we call a boundary line if our wave doesn't hit head on, but hits that boundary at some angle, when it goes into the new material, it's not just gonna change speed, it's also gonna change direction. This is known as refraction. You can see the effects of refraction all over the place, if you know what to look for. Since laser light doesn't spread out very much, this will give us a nice view of a single ray of light and the path that it follows. It's a little tough to see in the water though, so we'll just add a few drops of highlighter fluid to make it more visible. And now we'll use a fog machine to make the beam in the air visible too. And now that we can see that whole beam, we see that in fact the light does bend when it gets to that boundary. The angle that it hits the boundary at and the angle that it leaves the boundary at are not the same. Now there is a mathematical relationship between those two. It also links uh, those angles to some properties of the materials we're dealing with, the water and the air in this case. And that relationship is called Snell's Law. I have an old video about that, and I'll put a link in the description below in case you're interested in the math part of this. Got a magnifying glass here, which is just a lens on a stick. Because of the shape of this lens, when these parallel rays of light hit it at different points, they'll converge, they'll come together so that they cross at a single point. That spot where they cross is called the focal point of the lens. If we put the magnifying glass in water, the focus ends up at a different point. Since the materials involved are different, water and glass instead of air and glass, the light doesn't bend the same way as it did a moment ago. It doesn't bend as much. So instead of having our focal point inside of that fish tank, we're gonna see that it's well outside now. With this smaller bend, the rays of light are going to need a lot more distance before they converge to the focus. This is what your eye looks like. At the front we have the lens, or the cornea. Light travels at different speed through the cornea than through air, so the light bends when it gets to this boundary. At the back of the eye we have the retina. This is a big collection of cells that are sensitive to light. The cornea is shaped so that all the rays of light coming from a single spot on this candle, or anything else for that matter, 
that hit the cornea will converge to a single spot on the retina. And since all the light from one spot on the candle ends up at one, the same spot on the retina, we're seeing an image that's in focus, it's not blurry. If this were all taking place underwater though, the rays of light would bend differently. Instead of going from air to the cornea, they'd be moving from water to the cornea. So instead of all the rays from the wick of the candle hitting the same spot, they'd hit in different points on this little patch of the retina. Single spots are smeared over the surface of the retina, so the image that we see looks blurry. Our eyes simply aren't set up correctly to be able to see clearly underwater, which actually is okay, because if they were, then everything would be blurry when we're looking through the air like we are most of the time. If you've ever worn goggles underwater, you know that they let you see clearly again, so what's going on there? All goggles do is they bring a little pocket of air with you so that the light coming to your eye has this intermediate step. It goes from water to air right inside the goggles and then into your cornea. And since the light goes air to cornea for that last step, it focuses correctly again. Well, I really thought this was original and then I did a Google search and found out that a ton of people figured this out, but it's still cool. The trick here is to use your hands to help catch some bubbles right on your eyes. Since your eye sockets are a bit sunken, this uh, won't be too hard. With my face pointing down, I cut my hands right above, above my eyes, pressed against my eyebrows, and then I'll blow bubbles until I've caught enough that my eyes are surrounded by air again. Thank you for sticking with me all the way to the end. Please, please help me out by hitting the like button, and I would love to have you as a subscriber. If you do that, also hit the little bell icon so you get notifications when I update. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.